Hello guys, welcome to another episode of Success Navigation and uh, today I'm here with Chelsea Cohen. Chelsea is the founder of SourceTalk and uh, SourceTalk is helping e-commerce sellers to improve their overall inventory and uh, keeping optimized unity levels so that you have enough cash to work on other areas of your business. So without wasting any further time, I would like to ask Chelsea to continue and uh, talk a little bit about her journey in the e-commerce world. So Chelsea, the stage is yours. Sure. Yeah. Thanks for having me on the show. Uh, I am the the co-founder and CEO of So Stocked. I came into the Amazon space in 2014 selling. I uh, did a course called the Amazing Selling Machine, which was a um, huge course. They're still running amazing.com. And uh, Basically, my my uh, sales took off immediately. So I've been selling ever since. And 2018, really, I wasn't keeping as much of the money that I as I was wanting to keep, and saw that I was stocking out. I was overstocking and paying a lot of storage fees. Tried to create a system. Started becoming a full time job. Went to look for softwares. Nothing really cut it. And uh, so I met my business partner who was in the software space and uh, we decided to create so stocks to help solve that problem for for Amazon sellers. Yeah, so coming directly to the topic, uh, so uh, we have seen that how Amazon is actually shifting and uh, the way they are increasing fees every day. I know I have seen you talking about that stuff a lot of the times yeah. and how we can keep a track of this in the longer run because mm -hmm. when when certain change come in, we don't realize that at that exact moment, but down the line, we are losing a lot in profitability and uh, reducing our overall margins. So I would like to know about what recent changes that Amazon has done, a little bit uh, overview of that and how we should keep a track of this and improve our profitability. Yeah. Yeah, there have been a lot of changes. And, you know, as part of my background, as I shared, profit was how this whole thing started in me getting into creating software. And that's really my passion is, you know, I've coached a lot of people. I have helped a lot of people. And this side of the business has been the downfall of some of those those businesses. Yeah, It's not understanding, you know, as inventory comes in and the money comes in and then you owe a lot of payments and all of a sudden you can't pay those payments. Uh, and you start to realize, wait, I'm not making the money that I thought I was. It's very hard to, to track those things. So getting really good at that is important. And a big piece is realizing that we're not in the same place that we were four or five years ago in terms of profitability. You know, we are in a, uh, a recession, you know, we've got inflation going on in the United States. We've got shipping fees being crazy. And then we've got Amazon fees have increased over 20% uh, in the past two years, which is yeah. pretty, pretty massive. Yeah, so I think a short example of that can be when we start launching a product, we target a margin of 35 or 40 percent. Mm -hmm. And then when, when all these changes are happening, our price is not changing that much because competition is also getting tougher. Yeah. So at some times we are reducing the price and mm -hmm. at the same time, every cost is going up. So the margins are then shrinking. Yes, so, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I think uh, coming back to like uh, the things that we are seeing right now, mm -hmm. how Amazon has changed the removal fees to double and yeah. how they are, uh, you know, now applying dimensional weights to all, all the categories yeah. and increasing the storage fees. So yeah. uh, what, what you can say, like, what are the best ways to, you know, look at all these cost changes and how to uh, use them in our favor, actually? 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, a brief explanation of dimensional weight so that people can understand there is the actual weight of your product and then there is dimensional weight and Amazon is going to use whichever one is bigger. Dimensional weight comes into play when you there's a calculation. It's a very simple calculation. Um, it's basically looking at your unit length, width and height in inches and then dividing it by 139, which is called a di di dimensional divisor. Uh, that will show you whether you have a, a billable weight, a shipping weight higher than your actual weight. Yeah. Amazon does that calculation when you have a lightweight product that is very big, like a pillow is a good example. Um, so if you have lightweight, large products, you may be in a higher tier in terms of your billing than you might think you are. So you need to understand that one of the ways to start looking at your business is, is there a way that I can shrink that down? Is there a way I can reduce my dimensional weight? Uh, and we've started seeing just as consumers, you know, I've ordered things for Christmas and getting in clothing items, for example, uh, various items vacuum packed. You yeah. may have seen that and observed that yourself in products that you've ordered. That's a way to reduce your your dimensional weight re that reduces your fulfillment fees because dimensional weight affects fulfillment fees. It affects your removals. It affects your multi-channel fulfillment if you are doing multi-channel fulfillment, which skyrocketed. That's probably one of the largest um, increases that we've seen is multi-channel fulfillment. And then also if you're doing remote fulfillment, so any type of fulfillment and removals are all using dimensional weight and dimension and removals have gone from uh, about two years ago, it was 30 cents per unit, just 30 cents per unit flat. Now it includes dimensional weight and it's 97 cents per unit. It used to be 52 in 2020, 2023, yeah. For 2022 to 2023, it's increased almost double uh, plus dimensional weight. So it's very expensive uh, to to have to remove items. Yeah. Uh, and at the, at the same time, the, the storage fees is also going up and there are new changes coming down the line, like yeah. uh, Amazon warehouse distribution system, mm -hmm. uh, a new dashboard is coming in. I'm already seeing that on some of my accounts mm -hmm. and then the capacity manager is here. So the sense that we are getting from it is Amazon is now uh, like also Amazon reduced down some of their warehouses. And yeah. the, the thing is they are now focusing the seller to focus more on the supply chain part and inventory management part rather than just scaling the brands. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Uh, Amazon is making it very uncomfortable to overstock. Um, yeah. They don't want people who can't move inventory. So you have to become very good at that because they're showing us in everything that they're doing. Fulfillment fees have increased significantly for multi-channel fulfillment, but only incrementally for the normal fulfillment. Where the fees really start hitting home are the removals and the um, storage fees. There was a fee that was added last year, which is aged inventory, which started at nine months. And it was $1.50 extra on top of your normal storage, storage fees. $1.50 per cubic foot. Everything on storage is done for cu per cubic foot. And um, beyond that, they so that was a $1.50 starting at nine months to to the one year mark and then the normal long term storage of six dollars and ninety cents per cubic foot uh, then hits this year they change it to six months so six months and every 30 days it increases 50 um cents a dollar dollar fifty then at nine months it's three dollars and eighty cents then four dollars then 420 and then into the long term storage so they're really making it difficult for people who put inventory in that are, is not going to move and then they're making it difficult to remove it so any way that you slice it you're going to have problems with uh those fees if you put inventory in that is not going to move yeah and uh, at the same time um I would like to ask one question here regarding Amazon warehouse distribution. So mm -hmm. I just want yeah. to know they have introduced this new thing, but do you yeah. think it uh, sellers can benefit from that? Uh, 
like there is is there any significant benefit for the sellers or is it just another thing to get more cost of the the uh, mcf sellers mm -hmm. so um this can be this can be done with uh it's generally not um multi-channel fulfillment it's used to keep fba stocked and it was basically amazon says i want to we want to become your 3pl and um, they invited certain sellers. They're starting to open it up more, as you've seen new dashboards coming in. And they have offsite warehouses where you can send a container, you can send some pallets there, and they will house that inventory and they will send it into Amazon. They will drip it in based on looking at uh, whether inventory is going to. Yeah. Uh, one, one point to add here so this is one part to it like amazon sellers can use it but i think the way they are they have introduced is like they want the shopify seller to use that for you know if they are not selling on amazon just use their warehouse service to uh, get products to their customer so yeah, uh, yeah. so they, does does those sellers get benefit from that or uh, will that be costly so that so that's generally um fba and it's referred to as buy with prime. So Amazon usually would let, if you were an Amazon seller and you also sold on another platform, they would do multi-channel fulfillment where they would let sellers send inventory from FBA to their other customers. They, the new thing that happened last year, buy with prime was, hey, we don't care if you're an Amazon seller, you don't have to be an Amazon seller. Say you're only selling on Shopify, we will fulfill your stuff, which kind of contradicts them restricting Amazon sellers from having their inventory there. They're giving this space away to non-Amazon sellers, and yet they're saying we don't have enough space for you. So it's very interesting uh, dynamic. And then they launched this in 2022. Now 2023 comes along and multi-channel fulfillment gets a lot more expensive. So I don't know if they're shooting themselves in the foot with this program or what, um, it's, it's very interesting. I haven't yet made sense of what that, what that, uh, play is for Amazon, but it is important to know that multi-channel fulfillment is a lot more expensive, uh, but it does seem to have a higher conversion rate, uh, for, for at least their, their test cases for Shopify sellers using it. Okay. Uh, good to hear that. Uh, and, uh, regarding capacity manager, I'm seeing that now, it, it is also a, a good thing to note here that it is based on first price auction. So you will pay the whole mm -hmm. cost uh, if you bid something on that. So mm -hmm. I think it will become uh, quite challenging for, for the small sellers because that cost, as we have seen a look at the PPC, it will go up and up and then the huge sellers mm -hmm. can get benefit from that. So uh, yeah. what do you think about that? Will that run for a long time or uh, will that also, you know, go down the line and uh, get removed? Yeah, so I think um, it's it is a new is it is a new thing. I think this is something that is going to be here to stay. I think this is going to replace restock limits um, is is basically the goal, and I think that it will permanently replace restock limits because it's going to be another cash flow source for Amazon. It's pretty smart. They created that may be the play is they created this. Um, this scarcity of storage by inviting non Amazon sellers. Now that they don't have enough space, they're saying, Hey, you know, they, they give us restock limits, come back. And then they say, Hey, but we've got this warehouse, Amazon warehousing distribution that you can use. We, you'll, we'll charge you to store your stuff there. And, um, but you don't have restock limits. That was one piece of, of, of that, uh, restock limits impact. And then they bring it back, back since, bringing back restock limits, they say, okay, now we're, ha we're switching it. We're going to give you more visibility and we will give you the ability to buy more space. You can bid on more space. It will creating an auction scenario where you bid on more space. Um, so that's, that's, I think here to stay. And it's something that seems like it's new because it's new to us, but it's the beta test really, I believe was there's something called storage manager. And storage manager, and we wrote up about it in the news, I think uh, mid last year, It we, we wrote it up. But it was something where if you had an inventory performance index score that limited your, it wasn't your restock limits, it was your storage volume. 
if you have limits on your storage volume because you were below the inventory performance index threshold, they put limits on how much cubic space, not the number of SKUs, the number of units, but the cubic space you could bid in this same way. Now they're moving it into using it across all channels. So this is a tested idea. And okay. the thing to understand is not you might or might not pay that pay that bid, which is something that's interesting. They say you place a bid, if you win that bid, then yeah. you have more capacity, but you have to use that capacity. And you can get credits for moving inventory to the point where you might pay zero or you might pay half or whatever it is. But if you don't move that inventory and you don't use that capacity, they're going to charge you at that point. So yeah. the bid is not guaranteed that you Yeah, pay. And in the end, they are like trying sellers to focus more on the sell through just to mm -hmm. uh, incentivize them in some way or push them that we are giving you this limit or yeah. prove that you can sell this quantity. Exactly. And it's interesting because you have like the concept of the carrot and the stick, right? The rewards and the penalties. And so the carrot is, you know, hey, we're not going to charge you if you don't move it. You know, one of the sticks is, hey, we will charge you if you or we won't charge you if you do move it. We will charge you if you don't. Beyond paying for that bid, if you have if you're over the limit, you pay overage fees. So that's an additional fee that is not being talked about enough is over overage fees where you're going to pay um, a certain amount on a monthly basis for being over, that's something that needs to be watched because every month your capacity changes. So if you have submitted your inventory and then your capacity goes down, you're all of a sudden automatically potentially moved into being over and then you're paying fees. So that's another reason not to overstock. They're kind of cutting us as, in as many ways as possible um, to be seen. I'm, I'm sure there could be other other ways that they could find. Yeah. To, uh, yeah, I think as we talk, it is getting a lot more complicated only with all the fees getting stacked up and you know how they are making the life more harder for the sellers. Yeah, yeah. And that's, yeah. It, it, it's good that you said, said stack. We actually um, I worked with uh, Carbon6, our, our parent company, uh, and uh, Vanessa Hung, who's well known in the space. And we, yep. because this is so important, we wrote a, a white paper specifically on the fees, explaining how those fees work, how they're going to impact, um, how to reduce them, and also how to offset them in other ways throughout your business. Uh, and that white paper was released a couple of days ago. Um, yeah, we and, can uh, uh, attach we can we can have that uh, in in the chat and i can share that with the audience excellent yeah yeah it's it's so important to understand these things because your business needs to start focusing on uh, uh you know profitability and it's only going to be what if you can understand the fees that are impacting and how to how to uh mitigate those yeah uh Great point, obviously, because we need to have some kind of more insights on how these all fees are and to get mm -hmm. a better understanding to start selling uh, more efficiently in 2023. So uh, let's yeah. come along, come and talk about all the solutions that we can look into. Mm -hmm. So uh, first of all, I think the main uh, point that you can take from here is to improve the sell through. So mm -hmm. sell through can only yeah. be improved if we go uh, one step back and take a look at how we do the demand planning and how yeah. efficiently we manage our inventory and what kind of systems we can use. So uh, yeah. I would like to know a little bit about how so stocked is helping sellers. And is mm -hmm. that something you can say if you compare it to the cost of spreadsheets and versus the cost of so stock. So is it better for the seller and in what way uh, so stock is helping seller? I would like to know mm -hmm. a little bit some top notch features of so stock so that sure. uh, more sellers can come and get benefit from it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, first of all, time savings is is a factor. Uh, so the ability to not to automatically on a daily basis get your inventory updated is one reason to use uh, any inventory software. Uh, where it can get dangerous is if you don't understand how the formulas are calculated. You know, that was the, the big problem that I found was that there was a, you know, not, not transparent with how 
the how the numbers were were actually being worked out and then also not being able to customize because everyone you know people's businesses are different um so you need to know what it, what goes into that and the numbers can be vastly different i've worked with sellers where they were using a different software and it said they were selling eight units a day they had a spreadsheet and the spreadsheet was saying 10 units they came into so stock and it said 15. And they couldn't understand why they kept stocking out with their systems, but they also couldn't understand how so stock could be so much higher than what they were saying, almost twice as high as the the uh, other software. And it's because the same numbers that are coming from Amazon, if they're not analyzed properly, can get things wrong. If you stock out and you're doing an average based on that stock out, there's going to be it's going to be off. It's going to be say that your average is less than what it should be. Because if I am used to selling 100 units a day and then a couple of days I sell zero or I sell um, and, and, and the majority of the time, it's not the zeros that you have to worry about with those other softwares and those other systems. It's partial stockouts because they might filter out full stockouts where there's zero inventory. Mm -hmm. But if you have a suspension or if you have a partial stockout, those should be removed as well so that they don't pull the um, the numbers down like we're seeing in kind of some of these other things. Yes. So that's kind of first and foremost, what is the foundation that you're working with? Yes, so so stock will be providing us all those points where the sales are shifting from the average sales and you can mm -hmm. come in and change those numbers to just to improve all your overall forecast for the coming months. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I think that is something that relates to the name of the source talk actually. Uh, yeah. Le apart from that, regarding uh, keeping track of purchase orders and how mm -hmm. we can take a look at all our inventories in each and every place, is there something to offer uh, in that area? Yeah, yeah, well, that's one of, one of the features that we had. You're not able to, if you're missing some of the um, numbers within the equation, everything's going to be wrong. So if you yeah. don't, tell your system, hey, I have 2000 units coming, you're going to constantly be told that you're about to stock out, or you're going to be told that you need to place an order. So if you don't keep track of your purchase orders, uh, that becomes a problem. You have to be able to plan with all of the information. So so stock does have uh, purchase order tracking. Um, if you want, we can jump in and get kind of a visual on some of those things. Um, yeah, please, you can sense. share your screen. Sure. All right. So yeah, so um, some of the things that, uh, you know, you can see here, I'm supposed to order 1000 units from this supplier, I'm supposed to order uh, 4750 from this supplier, two different products. And uh, you can see there's a lot of different calculations that are involved in tracking your inventory. And we do it on a, an annual basis, looking at a full year worth of inventory, a lot of different things that come into play um, with forecasting. How long is your lead time? Uh, what are your purchase orders that, that are coming in? And you can see this, there's a purchase order that's already on its way uh, that's coming in that's going to land uh, at this particular date. And you can track all of that. And then I can come up here and I can click this button to place a purchase order. And that purchase order can then be tracked. Uh, inside of we call it the order tracker, which tracks all of yeah. our purchase orders. It will show all the stages of an order, like where it is and at what stage it is right now. Yes, exactly. When is it going to arrive? What's yeah. contained within it? Uh, all of those types of things. Uh, one more thing. Can we directly send that to our suppliers within the software? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, there's um, an email uh, capability where when you create your purchase order, you're able to then email the purchase order to your supplier or the transfer order to your warehouse. Yeah, uh, I think most of the sellers, what they are doing is they place the purchase order and then they forget it and they mm -hmm. don't keep a track of it. And sometimes it gets delayed or whatever things happen. And then down right. the line, they face either overstocked or getting understocked for something. So I think yeah. uh, it will help in that way to keep a track of purchase order at all stages and yeah. keep the status updated. 
Yeah, exactly. And you can create different filters. So if you want to see what what's landing in the next 30 days, or you can filter it for what's landing in the next 15 days, uh, you can keep track of these things and um, filter them so that you are kind of clearing the clutter and just focusing on specific elements. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and coming to the inventory part. So uh, mm -hmm. if I want to see like how much inventory I have at a 3PL. Yeah. So can we take a little bit of look at that? Yeah, yeah. So we have warehouse levels. Um, you're able to group by various different things and create different reports for different things. So I can see all of my my SKUs, what inventory I have at each uh, warehouse, how much I have, and um, just focus on you know those types of things. Okay. Uh, coming to the forecasting part, I think that is something mm -hmm. uh, very interesting. I, I would like to know some like there are many tools i am seeing around mm -hmm. forecasting yeah. so i just want to know how uh, so stock is managing that and what are the unique mm -hmm. points that you have created your tools on? sure yeah one of the things that we uh, promote a lot is uh, something called min max restocking to be able to know when you're supposed to place an order you need to look at your lead time so let's say it takes 60 days to arrive and then your buffer stock how much do you want to have at all times so you don't get too low so say that's 30, 60 day lead time plus 30 day buffer stock, you need to reorder 90 days before you run out of stock. Uh, so that's the that's the basic um, idea behind reorder point. We have something called as needed. So you can set a specific cadence, like I wanna transfer every month or I want to order every month, but a lot of people like to use for their transfer as needed, which activates what we call min max restocking. And min max restocking is essentially keeping that balance, not overstocking and not stocking out. So yeah. we'll say uh, I want 30 days and Amazon at all time. Don't go below 30 days. And there's various different reasons for that. Um, and then don't go above 90 days. So we'll say, okay, let's transfer so that by the time my inventory arrives at Amazon, I'm right around the 30 day mark and then stock up to 90 and then sell back through to 30. And so that it analyzes the data and it allows you to know how much to send in to stay within that particular range for your business. And uh, one more challenging area that I keep on seeing okay. while working in big companies like aggregators and some huge brands that are selling seven to eight figures. Mm -hmm. So there is a little bit misalignment between uh, brand management side mm -hmm. and marketing and uh, inventory side. So I want to know how so start can help to align our marketing goals with the forecasting so mm -hmm. that we can run, you know, a kind of a smooth inventory cycle down the line and yeah. uh, don't go over stock or under stock due to uh, one or another team. Yeah, absolutely. So that was a big piece that I found missing with all these tools was you've got the data from Amazon, but we need the data from the marketers heads. What are you planning on doing? Are you planning on, uh, let's say, a, a sponsored ad campaign? Maybe you're going to increase by 10%, right? We've got the data from Amazon, but we don't want to just repeat what we what we just did. We want to grow. So you can add a growth percentage on top of what you're currently doing. You can add it per product. You can add it across your entire catalog. You can add tags and let's say all of your best sellers. So you can add that in terms of marketing. So marketing can send data and say, hey, these are the products that we're going to be running this campaign on. The inventory team can come in, plug that in. Then they have an adjusted forecast that will help them to know how much to order, when to order, and also can say that the marketing team, hey, this particular SKU is about to stock out. You actually need to um, not put this in the, uh, the campaign and see if you can find ways to, to adjust it so that it doesn't stock out. Yeah, and this growth, can we assign some kind of, uh, if we, let's say if we have a lighting deals or coupons mm -hmm. run, running for some time, so can we mm -hmm. add that uh, here apart from this adjusted growth factor? Yes, absolutely. So we have it called lightning deals, but this can be any sale, an email campaign, influencer campaign. Yeah. And you basically come in here and you would plug in, let's say I'm running a two day sale and I want to 
set, sell an extra 200 units during that sale. That's my estimate. You would plug that in for that particular product. Uh, and so you can build lightning deals or you can build promotions into, into the calculation and it's going to update uh, your timeline. And so you can see here that I've got these two days where 100 units a day it just splits it equally between the two days. And we know that we're going to have um, everything is going to be recalculated to make sure that we don't stock out during that period. Yeah. And uh, just to confirm one thing, this will not be applicable in the next year when we come down to that right. forecasting range, right? It will just right. take it as one time thing. Yes, exactly. Okay. And our overall forecast will remain same. So that is mm -hmm. something cool. And can we do this as a bulk function if we have like 20, 30 SKUs? Yeah, so everything is, um, you have the ability to apply it okay. to uh, yeah. specific products that are tagged. You have filtered results. So if you if you go up into here and you create a filter based on different parameters, you say everything with the velocity, you know, between this and this, let's say everything within the, with the velocity between five and 20 sales a day, I'm going to run this campaign. And you can update it based on those that filtered result. Okay. Good to hear that. And uh, one more point here. So uh, most of the time what we see is sometime when there is like, you know, uh, what I have learned across the supply chain part, when mm -hmm. I, whatever kind of tool you can use, you can get up to like 60% accurate results yeah. at max. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, coming to that, if we still get out of stock, despite all these reasons, mm -hmm. what are kind of our best approaches to do when it comes to either reducing down your sales or uh, is, are there some hacks around that? If you can use that in Amazon to, yeah. um, to just to minimize that risk of getting out of stock mm -hmm. and uh, align all your sales growth and profitability overall. Sure. Yeah. So there's a, a couple of things and we do have a report that looks at which products are going to stock out We call it the stock out risk report. And so, you know, something different things might come up with that. You might see that you've got a stock out and we're projecting that it's a seven day stock out, very different actions to take than if we have a stock out, that's going to be a 28 day stock out. The seven day stock out, the action you would take would probably be to try to avoid that. So you can turn off your coupons. You can, um, slow down on some aggressive ads. You're always wanting to keep an eye on uh, your rankings. You don't want your rankings to plummet. If they drop a little bit, you know, that's something you can easily recover from if you know that you are going to be back in stock pretty soon and you can push a little harder. Uh, so that would be the actions to take to avoid. There are very different actions to take if you can't avoid. So um, a lot of what people like to do is to try to push their ranking as high as possible before stocking out. So some people uh, kind of let it ride. Some people like to be aggressive with maybe even pushing the stock out a little bit early. And the, the thing that you want to do, usually people will close their listing immediately. They get to zero and then they close their listing because that tells Amazon, I didn't stock out. You know, I didn't, or I, I stopped out, but kind of locked me in place, right? The kind of ninja hack, and I actually learned this from Vanessa Hung, who co-authored the white paper. She, um, the the uh, the trick that you can do is instead of stocking out, you strand your inventory on purpose. Stranded inventory penalizes your inventory performance index score less than running out of stock by like by increasing a price or uh, mm -hmm. some stuff around that or by sure. like there are multiple ways to get into standard yes exactly increasing a so price I think the the the, uh, the thing from where we can easily get back will be the best option exactly so one of the one of the ways i heard and and you might even be able to close your your close your listing before um before you stock out but um, I'm not sure that may indicate to Amazon that you are stocked out. But the other thing that we have heard is, is to change the main image uh, yeah. in, in such a way that you're violating. So cropping the image down so there's no white space. That's a, a violation for Amazon. Yeah. 
Amazon can then will then turn off your listing. But once you replace it, it's a pretty quick update. It's like, you know, let's say 30, you know, 30 minutes versus a couple of days and some trial and error with a pricing error. Amazon isn't always, you know, quick to turn on your listing with a pricing error. So pricing error will get you there. It may be a little bit harder to get you back. So replace, you know, image violation is probably uh, a better bet for a situation like that. Yeah, uh, I think that is something uh, very cool because uh, getting out of stock suddenly or just keeping your margins at the same level and get out of stock, I think it is not a viable solution. Instead, you can reduce down your sales or just increase your profits mm -hmm. at the very last moment and keep avoiding the out of stock. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah, I think that totally makes sense. Mm -hmm. And uh, final thing that I would like to touch on, I think we have talked about this uh, previously as well. So mm -hmm. I would like to know what is coming down the line of source talk and what new developments are coming that we will be seeing in 2023. Sure. Uh, we're focused a lot on on profitability. So we're looking at, we have currently um, lost sales due to stock out. So I've created various different uh, things in terms of training to uh, to be able to do that. So an assessment sheet. Well, if you had, you know, if you had these stock outs, why did you have the stock outs? How can you analyze uh, how to, to get uh, those those things in your supply chain handled so they don't repeat themselves? Uh, overstock, we're, we're going to be pushing overstock columns very soon. I actually just jumped off of a meeting right before this to work toward finalizing that. And it analyzes your cubic feet so that you can see based on your current sales velocity and your current inventory, if you have certain products that are going to cost you a lot in overstock fees. Mm -hmm. So that's something that in terms of the profit side of things, Inventory and profit and cash flow are very much tied together. So we're focused on adding more things to the tool to be able to help sellers make decisions, not just on, I need to restock my inventory because I'm running out, but also I need to restock my inventory on this product, but this product is actually not, you know, not beneficial to me, right? I can't move it fast enough. So I'm not, I'm going to liquidate that product or these are slow sellers. These are the ones that are overstocked. I'm about to pay a lot of money if I don't change something. I'm going to have to remove it if I don't change something. So marketing team should start to become more focused this year on not just driving revenue, but increasing profitability and increasing sell through uh, and increasing storage space as, as some of the, the things that they focus on, which yeah. is like uh -huh. a big shift. Yeah, and at the same time, we need to focus on cutting down those SKUs which are not going to make any uh, profit for us down the line as well, so that we can uh, have more focus on those part of uh, brand which are highly profitable and can generate more profit. Yeah, exactly. Because because if you you might think I call it the silent killer uh, storage fees um, because you might think that you're profitable when you do the math in terms of oh well I if I sell this immediately without factoring in any storage fees, it's profitable. But then if that inventory is not moving, if you do the calculation, it's a lot less profitable. If you've got a, a product in there for, you know, six, seven months, all your profit is, you know, eliminated. Yeah, um, perfect. Uh, I think uh, we are already above the timeline. So yeah. let's uh, wrap it up. And I think we discussed a lot about Amazon in 2023 and all the profitability stuff that we can work on. So I would like to ask just one final thing. Uh, if Are there any uh, opportunities for agencies? Uh, are, will mm -hmm. they collaborate in some way with SourceTalk or are there any kind of promotions that you're running for agencies? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, we work a lot with agencies and aggregators and um, we have specific uh, discounting for for agencies and aggregators. We're also going to be working more and more with uh, profit audits, being able to look at and help to analyze uh, a business and, and see where profit could be recovered. What are those plans to, through inventory management, recover some of those profits? What are How can you optimize your shipping to reduce some of those fees at your 3PL um, and you know palletizing, carton handling, 
And so we are working, we're, we're starting to put that together, working with those profit audits and um, helping agencies to start to implement this because it's a big ask to say, you know, let's switch your entire inventory management system over. But if we could help you to recover, you know, over time working with you, you know, say three months, six months to get that worked into your uh, workflows with your teams and getting your teams mm -hmm. trained up, that's a lot easier, especially if you know that, you know, on a client for client basis, maybe you can help to recover 50,000, 100,000, 150,000 in avoiding stock outs, in avoiding overstock fees and in uh, optimizing shipping capacity. So that's our real focus is how can we help agencies to help their clients to uh, keep more money in their pocket? Because that really truly is the secret to scaling and the secret to cash flow. Yeah, uh, I think that let's wrap this up with this uh, final summary. And I think we are finally seeing something management, some management consulting stuff coming into e-commerce. So yeah. uh, good to hear about that. And uh, thank you, Chelsea, for your time. And uh, let's stay in touch for any future stuff. And uh, I hope there will be more stuff down the line that will be coming from your side. So uh, thank you for your time today. And uh, have a great day.